And these are our group members. Me, Minkan, Adam, Jiayao, Hangjie, Hannah, and Jing'en. Hello, I'm Minkan, and today I'll be providing an introductory sequence on the presentation of harnessing bacteriophages for targeted microbial treatment. Now, in this presentation, we'll be exploring the exciting field of bacteriophage therapy and its potential in combating bacterial infections. Now, let's get into the word therapeutics. When we hear therapy, all we can think about is the doctor sitting in front of you and you're just telling him about his life problems. Right. So, that's not the case here, however, even though psychiatric counseling does follow through in the field of therapeutics. So, therapeutics within the medical field encompasses a wide range of procedures and treatments aimed at improving patient health through disease identification, management, and treatment. It includes prescription medications, surgical procedures, physical therapy, and psychiatric counseling. There we go. But, to one particular focus within therapeutics has gained quite the attention these days. It's called bacteriophage therapy. Bacteriophages are viruses. They are viruses, despite having bacteria in front of them. Isn't that fascinating? They are viruses that specifically infect bacteria, offering a compelling alternative to traditional antibiotics for treating bacterial infections. Unlike antibiotics, which often have broad spectrum effects and can harm both the harmful as well as the beneficial bacteria, bacteriophages possess the unique ability to selectively target and kill bacteria that are evil without harming the patient. This specifically is what makes bacteriophage therapy a potential solution to combat the growing problems of antibiotic resistance. Now, let's delve a little deeper into what encompasses bacteriophage therapy. This innovative approach involves the utilization of bacteriophages, which are viruses, as mentioned, that specifically target and infect bacteria. Bacteriophages have a distinct structure within their genetic material enclosed, enclosed in a protein coat, which gives them the unique shape when introduced into a bacterial cell, bacteriophages initiate a replication process known as the lytic cycle. During the lytic cycle, bacteriophages inject their genetic material into the bacterial cells, effectively hijacking the host's machinery. They then bind to specific receptors on the bacterial cell surface and commence their replication, resulting in the production of numerous progeny phages. The replication process leads to the destruction of the bacterial cells, effectively eliminating the infection. The use of bacteriophages in therapeutics offers significant advantages over conventional antibiotics. Firstly, bacteriophages can be particularly useful in treating illnesses that are resistant to antibiotics, providing a potential remedy for the problem of the antibiotic resistance. Their ability to selectively target and destroy bacteria offers a very specific and effective approach to treating infections as a whole, minimizing the chances of harmful side effects. Moreover, and my final words on this, is that bacteriophages exhibit a strain-specific nature, allowing them to precisely target and eliminate specific strains of bacteria, while leaving beneficial bacteria unharmed. This targeted approach reduces the disruptions to the body's microbiota and provides a healthier balance of bacteria within the system. Thank you. So firstly, I am going to describe the taxonomy of bacteriophages, or also known as phages. Bacteriophages or phages are viruses or prokaryotes. Since at least 100 new bacterial viruses are described each year, approximately 6,000 viruses are essentially being considered. Because of this, bacteriophages are the world's most numerous viral family. Currently, phages are categorized in a hierarchical and comprehensive system with one order and 10 families. For the structure of bacteriophages, it has a protein code called the capsid, which encapsulates the genome. It is made up of a polyhedral head. It can also be enclosed or unenveloped, and it can have many shapes, such as rod shape, filamentous. The capsid is composed of many capsomeres. Varying species have varying sizes and also shapes. The genome is made up of linear or circular, single-stranded or double-stranded DNA or RNA. As for the tails, they can be contractile or non-contractile, long or short. Tail fibers are also present. These helps in the virus's attachment to the bacterial cell wall. All of them are also made up of a nucleic acid genome coated in a shell of phage encoded capsid proteins which protect the genetic material and mediate its transport into the next host cell. Electron microscopy has enabled the detailed viewing of hundreds of phage kinds. Some of them appear to have heads, legs, and also tails. Despite this, phages must travel through space using Brownian motion due to their lack of mobility. As for the characteristics, the bacterial phages are composed of a protein coat encapsulating their genetic material and various tail structures for host recognition. 
The fish coats, which are totally comprised of protein, believed to be important for protecting the phage nucleic acid from destruction by components in the surrounding media. Attaching the virus to its susceptible host and conveying the nucleic acid to the cell's interior. Other than that, bacteriophages are particularly species specific in terms of their host. They typically infect only a single bacterial species. When a bacteriophage attaches to a vulnerable host, it uses one of two replication strategies lytic or lysogenic. During a lytic replication cycle, a phage attaches to a vulnerable host bacterium inserts its genome into the whole cell cytoplasm and manufactures its proteins using the host ribosomes. The resources of the host cell are then quickly transformed to viral genomes and capsid proteins, which assemble into many copies of the original phage. The host cell is either actively or passively lysed as it dies, allowing the new bacteriophage to infect another host cell. For the lysogenic replication cycle, the phage connects to a vulnerable host bacterium and inserts its genome into the cytoplasm of the host cell. The phage genome, on the other hand, is either incorporated into the bacterial cell chromosome or preserved as an episomal element, where it is duplicated and passed on to daughter bacterial cells without destroying them. Prophages are integrated phage genomes, while isogenes are bacteria that contain them. Prophages can revert to lytic replication and kill their host. After infection, the bacterial phage hijacks the bacterium's cellular machinery, forcing the cell to create viral components rather than bacterial components. In the end, additional bact bacteriophages assemble and burst out of the bacteria, which is a process also known as lysis. My name is Muhammad Adam Reza Hamza, and I'm going to be going through why bacteriophages are an alternative to antibiotics. Now, if you know anything about antibiotics, you may know that they are very powerful drugs whereby they basically have cured or helped us fight off diseases that have been horribly fatal years ago. In fact, many, not too long ago actually, like the early 1900s, people would have died just by simple cuts due to bacteria. But after antibiotics came around, this all changed. And therefore, in a way, we also lost respect for bacteria. And also, we have also lost respect for antibiotics because most people, you and I included, may or may not use antibiotics for simple stuff. And therefore, this gave the rise to AMRs, antimicrobial resistance, or antibiotic superbugs, whereby these bacteria that used to be able to be killed off by these antibiotics started to get resistant to them. And therefore, well, when we use antibiotics on them, nothing happens. They linger in our body and they're horribly dangerous. Before we move on, let's talk about the short yet interesting history of how bacteriophages were discovered. So scientists have long since observed, actually, bacteriophages in their natural habitat in nature. However, it wasn't until 1910 when a French researcher called Felix de Herald finally decided to research them. He was stationed on the front lines and investigating a severe case of dysentery. And he noticed, while well, he was after he streaked and cultured this bacteria on a plate, that there were these clear spots on it with no bacteria on it. And that's where he discovered, or rediscovered, bacteriophages. It wasn't until 1919 that the first case of bacteriophage therapy was done on a 12-year-old boy with severe dysentery again. And he miraculously recovered in a few days and all his symptoms ceased and he was back to normal, all because of bacteriophages. Finally, I will go over the mechanism of action of bacteriophages. So when we inject ourselves with bacteriophages during phage therapy, the phage will go through the body and when they find a host cell that they can attach themselves to, they inject their genetic material into that cell. Afterwards, they hijack that cell's machinery and use it to replicate and create multiple copies of that same bacteria. After that, using enzymes, they burst through the cell and kill the bacteria with all the copies that they have created. And then these new bacteriophages spread throughout the rest of the site of infection and kill the rest of the bacteria and snuff out the infection. And that is why bacteriophages are strong as they are at fighting infection. Hi, I'm Hang Jie and I'll be giving an example of how bacteriophages could be used as treatment for MISA. Finding the precise strain of MISA that is causing the infection is the first step. To discover the strain's characteristics and profile of antibiotic resistance, laboratory testing and genetic analysis are used. Bacteriophages are then isolated and chosen based on their strong affinity for the detected MRSA strain. 
This procedure entails gathering samples, then screening them to find bacteriophages that successfully hunt down and eradicate the MRSA strain. Next, the bacteriophages are multiplied and processed for therapeutic application after being isolated. This entails mass bacteriophage production in a lab environment, purification to remove impurities, and formulation into an appropriate delivery vehicle, such as a liquid solution or gel. Depending on the type and location of the MRSA infection, bacteriophages are often delivered directly at the infection site or systematically. Depending on the particular situation, the administration methods may include direct application to wounds or inhalation. Once inside the patient's body, the bacteriophages locate the MRSA bacteria and attach to their surface. The bacteriophages inject their genetic material into the bacteria, replicating and causing the bacteria to undergo lysis, which leads to their destruction. Lastly, testing and follow-up appointments are held to assess the effectiveness of the therapy and guarantee the MRSA infection is permanently eradicated. I will also be discussing about the impact of bacteriophages on humans, discussing both the benefits and challenges of it. The first benefit is that it is a high target approach. A highly targeted method of treating bacterial infections is provided by bacteriophage therapy. Due to the fact that bacteriophages are strain specific, it can be precisely targeted and eliminated while good bacteria are left unharmed. Besides that, bacteriophages may be used in conjunction with antibiotics or other medicinal drugs as part of combination therapy. The effectiveness of treatment could be improved through a synergistic effect of this strategy. The number of bacteria can be reduced by bacteriophages, and the weakened bacteria can then be further exploited by antibiotics, potentially increasing antibiotic efficacy and limiting the emergence of antibiotic resistance. One challenge of bacteriophage therapy is that it is an emerging field, and extensive research is still required to fully understand its effectiveness, safety, and long-term impacts. Regulatory frameworks for bacteriophage therapy are still evolving in many countries, which can hinder its widespread implementation. This could create barriers for researchers, healthcare providers, and pharmaceutical companies as they may be unsure about the specific requirements and processes necessary to comply with regulatory expectations. Finally, bacteria can develop resistance to bacteriophages just like they can do to antibiotics. This may reduce the long-term effectiveness of bacteriophage therapy, requiring ongoing phage research or the creation of phage mixtures to combat resistance. Thank you. Thank you, Li Hangjie. Now I will be talking about the assumptions and ongoing research regarding bacteriophage therapy. Looking ahead, the future of bacteriophage therapy holds great promise for targeted microbial treatment. Ongoing research and scientific advancements have shed light on several key areas that demonstrate the potential of bacteriophages as a valuable therapeutic tool. One of the significant assumptions based on current research is that bacteriophage therapy will expand its reach to target a broader range of bacterial infections, especially those that are currently difficult to treat due to antibiotic resistance. Studies have shown promising results in using bacteriophages to combat antibiotic-resistant pathogens like MRSA, as mentioned by Hangji just now, as well as multidrug-resistant Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The ability of bacteriophages to specifically target and infect Bacterial strains offer immense potential for addressing the growing challenges of antibiotic resistance. Another exciting avenue for future prospects lies in the genetic engineering and modification of bacteriophages. By introducing specific genes encoding antimicrobial peptides or enzymes, researchers have enhanced the efficacy and broadened the host range of bacteriophages. Studies have shown that genetically modified bacteriophages can exhibit improved bacterial killing capabilities and increased specificity. This approach opens up possibilities for tailored phage therapies that can effectively combat specific bacterial strains, including those that are resistant to multiple antibiotics. Lastly is the combination therapies. Exploring combination therapies involving bacteriophages and traditional antibiotics or other microbial agents is another promising direction for future prospects. Studies have highlighted the synergistic effects of combining bacteriophages with antibiotics, resulting in enhanced bacterial clearance and reduced development of bacterial resistance. Combination therapies offer the potential to overcome the limitations of monotherapy and provide more effective treatment options for complex infections. 
Now, I will be talking about the challenges to address. In order to fully realise the future prospects of pregnancy therapy, there are challenges that need to be addressed. Firstly, regulatory considerations are crucial to ensure the safe and effective use of bacteriophage-based therapeutics. Establishing clear guidelines and frameworks for evaluation, approval, and production processes is essential. Standardization of production methods and quality control measures will also be necessary to ensure the consistency and reliability of bacteriophage products. Ongoing research efforts are also focused on understanding the mechanisms of bacterial resistance or to bacteriophages and developing strategies to minimize its occurrence such as the use of phage cocktails and sequential phage treatments. Lastly, phage acceptance and awareness of bacteriophage therapy are vital and efforts should be made to provide accurate information, dispel misconceptions and emphasize the scientific evidence supporting its effectiveness and safety. In conclusion, the future of bacteriophage therapy holds tremendous potential for targeted microbial treatment. Now, I will be passing it on to Minkan Koko to conclude this entire video. Thank you. Hi, Minkan here again, and now we've reached the summit point at the end of our presentation. So, what have we learned so far? Bacteriophage therapy offers a targeted and promising solution within the field of therapeutics for the treatment of bacterial infections, including antibiotic-resistant strains like MRSA. Bacteriophages, which belong to different families and exhibit diverse morphologies, possess several advantages such as strain specificity and minimal harm to beneficial bacteria. The process of bacteriophage therapy involves identifying the specific bacterial strain, isolating appropriate bacteriophages, and administering them to the patient directly or systematically by injecting their genetic material and causing bacterial lysis. Bacteriophages effectively eliminate the infection. While bacteriophage therapy holds great potential, there are challenges to be addressed. Further research is necessary to understand its efficacy, safety, and long-term effects. Regulatory frameworks must be developed to ensure proper implementation and standardized manufacturing processes, and clear guidelines are required. Additionally, the possibility of bacterial resistance to bacteriophages demands ongoing research to devise strategies that maintain long-term treatment effectiveness. The impact of bacteriophage therapy extends beyond MRSA treatment, encompassing microbial treatment in diverse fields such as medicine, agriculture, and environmental management. By harnessing the specificity and effectiveness of bacteriophages, targeted therapies can be developed to combat antibiotic resistance and provide alternative treatment options. In order to fully realize the potential of bacteriophage therapy, continuous research, regulatory advancements, and public awareness are paramount. Through these efforts, bacteriophage therapy can emerge as a vital tool in the fight against bacterial infections, addressing the urgent need for effective and targeted treatments while reducing the burden of antibiotic resistance. 